Today I want to address a problem in Kleinian theory. It's a problem that I've been aware of for a long time. Um, haven't quite known how to deal with it. Certainly haven't known how to resolve it. So I've kind of put it aside, uh, allowed it to sit there while being aware that there is this unresolved problem. Uh, perhaps someone may have solved it. Uh, I don't know. Um, someone in the area of uh, child development, uh, infant development research, uh, that research is certainly relevant to the issue. So, so what is the issue? Uh, according to Klein, uh, the child um, arrives and uh, very quickly goes into uh, that um, phase and level of mental organization that she calls the paranoid schizoid position. The child begins to sort out experience on the basis of pleasure and pain, pleasure good, pain bad, and splitting uh, becomes um, uh, begins to take place right away. Uh, if, if, if it fails to develop, uh, then the infant is left in an essentially chaotic, uh, unorganized, psychotic state. A lot of people don't understand that Klein sees splitting as a necessary uh, developmental task. Uh, a lot of people with a superficial understanding of Kleinian theory think that splitting is just a bad thing that we need to overcome. Certainly we do need to overcome it if we uh, want to move on into the depressive position. But before we can move into the depressive position, we have to first of all move into the paranoid schizoid position, which depends upon the capacity to split. Um, some seriously ill uh, patients can't hold their splits. Uh, the good is always turning bad, the bad is turning good, and the result is experience is chaotic. Okay, so the infant <coughs> normally learns how to split <coughs> and is able to maintain these splits. Um, okay, oh, what's the problem with this? Uh, the problem is that uh, splitting, uh, although it's seen as a very primitive um, process in Kleinian theory, uh, it actually requires a good deal of cognitive sophistication. To be able to, it requires the ability to abstract uh, from experience because <clears throat> experience tends to be a flux, a flow. Um, it's not so bipolar. Um, it is not uh, categorical, but it is dimensional. In other words, uh, um, we're, we're very, very warm, um, and, and, and then we're a little, a little cooler and then still a bit cooler and then it's starting to get cold and now it's getting quite cold and now it's very cold. Uh, all of our experience seems to show this dimensional flow. Certainly animal experience, and we are animals of course, uh, however peculiar and special an animal we are. Um, Animal experience seems to show this dimensionality rather than categoriality, if there is such a word. Um, so, to move into the categorical really requires the move into the symbolic. To be able to abstract from this flow uh, two categories cold, hot, good, bad. Um, 
And it would seem that infants probably cannot do that until they move into symbolic functioning. When do they move into symbolic functioning? Uh, Jean Piaget, the great cognitive psychologist, uh, said around 18 months. Uh, perhaps nowadays people would say that's quite a bit too late, that symbolic functioning maybe begins uh, earlier, uh, certainly sometime in the second year of life, um, we may move into symbolic functioning. And of course, different uh, children uh, may move may make that move at different times, some earlier, some later. But it's a pretty important uh, mental development uh, to be able to symbolize, to name, and then to abstract and to generalize. And that's what splitting involves. It involves abstracting and generalizing. The world comes to be uh, oversimplified into all good and all bad. Now, that is a great complex act of mental abstraction, mental simplification, um, categorization. Um, and I think infants can't do this until sometime in the second year of life. But in Kleinian theory, uh, the infant is entering into the paranoid schizoid position where splitting prevails uh, during at least the first six months of life. She even suggests in places that at around six month, months, uh, the child is, is beginning to move into the depressive position, which involves an even more sophisticated cognitive capacity to see both sides now, to see that something is not either good or bad, but in some ways both good and bad. Uh, in other words, splitting, according to Klein, begins to be overcome around six months of age. Whereas uh, cognitive research would suggest not only is splitting not able to be overcome at six months of age, but splitting can't even occur at six months of age, um, that it requires symbolization. A year or more, uh, Piaget said 18 months, um, before the child has the cognitive capacity to do the abstraction involved in splitting. Okay, uh, so this is a serious problem, it seems to me, for Kleinian theory. I don't know how widely uh, this problem has been recognized or how widely it has been addressed. I know a colleague uh, some 25 years ago wrote a PhD thesis on the topic, but um, I'm not sure whether uh, the point he was making there has been widely picked up and widely recognized. Maybe it's been recognized by people who simply uh, leave Kleinian theory instead of dialoguing with it and move on into other forms of uh, object relations or relational psychoanalysis. I don't think this problem has been um, adequately addressed, or at least I'm not aware if it has been. Um, why have I been able to sort of set it aside? Um, because I don't work with infants and I don't work with children. Uh, the Kleinian model of the mind fits beautifully my experience of work with adults. Um, uh, adults of different levels of, of, of emotional development, different types of psychopathology, but I always see the paranoid schizoid position uh, and I always see elements of the depressive position. Um, another common misunderstanding is the idea that only borderline patients split. This is utterly untrue. Uh, all narcissistic level um, uh, patients, whether they're borderline, schizoid, um, bipolar, uh, and, and neurotics, People who have reached the depressive position continue to split 
Because again, in Kleinian theory, these are not stages, these are mental positions, and we oscillate between these positions. What we call a, a terrible, bad mood is uh, in a person who normally functions in the depressive position, uh, this represents a regression into PS, the bad mood. I'm not myself. Well, you are yourself. You are yourself in PS, uh, but you prefer to operate in the depressive reparative position, and you try to get back there as quickly as you can. But these fluctuations and the splitting that occurs in PS um, is, is everywhere. Everyone splits. Some do little more than split. Uh, some split only from time to time and temporarily, but we all split. Uh, so that's the truth of Kleinian theory as far as I'm concerned. And um, therefore, since I work with adults and her theory of the mind is confirmed in my work with adults, I'm not worried uh, about the issue of the genetic uh, origins of all of this, its genesis, that is, in, in infancy. Um, I leave that to developmental psychologists, um, preferably developmental psychologists who also know about Kleinian theory and recognize this problem and, and try to address it. So it's a theoretical problem. It's a problem for developmental uh, psychology. It's a problem for the Kleinian theory of development, but it's not a problem for Kleinian theory as applied to the minds of older children and adolescents and adults, where we can clearly see these two different positions or organizations of the mind at work. So I will leave it there.